good afternoon and welcome so you can see the industry halat there is a market related thing mutual fund and you know, this that is full and here yeah, too many so that's the challenge for you that's the challenge for you <laughs> how how to make in, uh, in, uh, in um, insurance more interesting how to make in, insurance more popular and uh, that's uh, if you see instead of the subject also the same thing it's uh, insurance for all the road ahead or from india to bharat whatever you call it uh, and when, what i was telling you is i was pretty serious uh, uh, people are more interested to listen what's happening to the market to put their money in there but not insurance uh, so what's the what is happening uh, fortunately uh, ever since uh, i would say the new regulator took over it's basically delhi hyderabad combination reserve bank of india made this uh, term very popular v triple r variable reverse repo rate uh, which is the auctions during the covid time uh, after that uh, when they started uh, you know withdrawal of money this using that so here in insurance is i think r square rr regulatory reforms that's what happening all of you all of you know that products process distribution everything is undergoing a radical change i will not uh, talk much people have come to listen to you we'll take a few questions not at the end so keep the microphone ready uh, so i will start with the general comment from all of you and then probably we'll get into some of the micro issues that we are following uh, also i mean for the audience i think you probably know that there's a draft insurance act which uh, dfs department of financial services uh, have already put on the table and for comment so i will also ask you uh, what is your how do you look at this because most importantly this uh, is talking about uh, if i am not mistaken that the it's is redefining insurance if i may say so uh, taking the license as a media person showing off all the jar jargons and all Uh, the insurance that we know or we used to know or even know what we know and the draft what is proposed is very different it's completely looking at insurance from a different angle redefining insurance okay it's basically we always talk about insurance and risk but i think the first time very consciously i was going through this draft and all is talking about explaining why insurance is management of risk and risk at every level risk at every walk of life so i will not talk on our view up you need to talk um, i would rather start with bhargav uh, preliminary remarks uh, all the names are given alphabetically or alphabet order by the surname so dasgupta that's what you have been called first and so on and so forth so the first round uh, preliminary remarks uh, about this taking insurance ghar ghar mein whatever uh, before that there was a mutual fund um, panel we are discussing that uh, we started with mutual fund sahi hai and then they said that ghar 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 mein sip so similarly ghar ghar mein insurance or the r square regulatory reforms your uh, first take and then we'll get your thing over to you bhagab thank you tamal so i have to uh, thank or blame whichever way you want look at it my parents for being in this hot seat uh, first um, so uh, you know let me give a few points and then obviously you know all of us will have our th uh, thoughts on what's happening uh, if you look at uh, the point that you started with that uh, you know in terms of awareness and popularity of insurance uh, all behavior science talks about the fact that you know people are more focused on making money rather than you know giving a little bit of premium to protect an event that may or may not happen and that's one of the reason why insurance penetration takes more time to increase people who actually go through an event of risk realize the true value of insurance and uh, as society evolves as uh, income increases as uh, families become more nuclear people realize the need to have protection uh, you know to protect the assets that they have or pay for large accidents that might happen to you or uh, an health event that might happen to you and that's a natural journey I and mean, if you see globally typically as per capita income crosses about $2000 per head the insurance penetration everywhere in the world goes up if you look at india uh, the aggregate insurance market uh, 
the GI part, the non-life part, and non-life in India includes health. Uh, unlike most of the other parts of the world, the penetration is roughly about 1%, which is much lower than other BRICS countries. I'm not even comparing with the more developed countries. And if you look at insurance density, which is per capita insurance premium that we pay, it is almost one-tenth of China, which is also not you know, anywhere near what the world average is. So that tells you about the gap that we have uh, and the opportunity equally for the, for the industry. If you look at any major catastrophe that happens in India, roughly 10 to 15% of the losses are covered by insurance. 85 to 90% people pay out of their pocket or maybe at times you know, the state steps in because they don't have insurance. So that's the, that's the unfortunate reality which we have to address. And you know, the point that you rightly make uh, is that I think there is a, for the first time after a long time, after 20 years, we are seeing a lot of initiative both from the center and from uh, the regulator in terms of addressing this need gap. And that's, we believe, a huge positive from a longer term perspective. And I'm sure over the course of this discussion, we'll talk a bit more about some of these things. We'll, we'll get into the micro level. You spoke about uh, penetration, long life is 1%. It's actually half of China, right? China is about 2%. And while the, your, you, what you spoke about, the density, that's the insurance premium, is one-tenth of China. So, yeah, over to you, uh, Ritesh, just we'll go in this way. Uh, uh, just one after this and then. Uh, uh. Thank you. Uh, so, I mean, let me try and uh, sort of put a different twist to this. So, uh, what I believe is that what we are presently experiencing is what I call the insurance 4.0. Uh, you had the PSUs originally to start with and then there was insurance 2.0 when at the turn of the millennium private sector came in and then we had an event wherein uh, de-tariffing happened in 2008 which was, which was 3.0 and mm -hmm. what we are now seeing is 4.0 wherein what we are really sort of getting into is we are trying to align ourselves to how the world sees insurance. Because a lot of things that are being spoken of, I mean, you know, whether sort of it is in the, uh, I mean, the act changes that, that are being spoken of or the regulatory reforms that uh, you, you spoke of, this is really in terms of aligning India to how insurance is practiced the world over. I mean, you know, Bhargav spoke in terms of some of the numbers and if you just allow me to. So, yes, I, I think we've got a fair distance to cover up uh, uh, to our neighbors. Uh, which are there, but uh, I just want to share with uh, some numbers. Your neighbors meaning? I mean, the mutual funds. Okay. <laughs> the, the actual neighbors yes, here. Yes. <laughs> okay. See, uh, India's uh, sort of non-life insurance penetration was 0.5 to the GDP when the private sector uh, when the private sector was allowed. At that point in time, we were the say the 28th largest country in the world in terms of insurance uh, penetration. We fast forward 20 years, we've actually been able to grow at about a 16% CHER sort of through these 20 years to come to the uh, sort of uh, to come to the level of 220,000 which was the number last year or about 260,000 that would be the number sort of by the end of this year. But uh, we've also sort of done this journey from a 0.5 to the GDP to a 1% to a GDP. From a 28th in terms of global ranking to a 14th in terms of global ranking. Yes, I mean, and on the other side, when we look forward, so the, so the other fact which I want to put on the table is, if we were to look at the GDP growth rate of the country, sort of through these 20 years, the nominal GDP has grown at about 12%. In, in, a, in a manner of speaking, our growth has been about 400 basis points over and above the nominal GDP growth rate. And what is interesting is that whether you look at the last 20 years or you look at the last 10 years or the last five years, I mean, on a year on year basis, it might differ. Uh, but as a trend, this is something which is there. Uh, and I say this because a lot of people have a view on how the economy would grow. Our industry is a little less known. And, if, and therefore, if the view is, and the larger consensus is that the nominal GDP continues to grow at a robust rate in terms of a two-digit, the logical extension is that e even without any intervention, we should be growing at that 15-16% plus. So, so that's, that's something which is very, very clearly something uh, sort of uh, which is there. Uh, COVID obviously has been a very, very defining uh, sort of moment for, uh, for the industry as it has been, I think, the, the world over for all of us. I mean, you know, apart from the fact that as an industry, we've gone out and paid 25,000 crores of claims. And, and I'm only talking in terms of the non-life industry. I think the important change that it has done is that it has made insurance somewhere from a push product to a pull product. 
uh, I mean, not something which Bargo was alluding to, sort of in terms of the fact that for the first time, we actually sort of start seeing the fact that people do want insurance. And I think this is something that we need to build upon. The regulatory reforms that you spoke of are essentially sort of in the, in the direction of then taking India to the next level, wherein, I mean, what is being spoken by the regulator is, uh, I mean, 20, 2047 insurance for all. Yeah, Rakesh, what do you? I I think uh, what Bhagav and Ritesh said uh, uh, is absolutely appropriate. Insurance, of course, is a late entrant, uh, and general insurance in particular, obviously, is indemnity business. India has a typical mindset of savings, culture, returns, and you know, obviously, insurance in the first decade from 2000 to 2010, I would still broadly say, was the decade where life insurances. Where insurers were establishing themselves and we were somewhere you know in a tariff kind of a backdrop to be fair uh, we are a risk oriented business and to an extent you know the first decade we tried to discover ourselves what do we want to do whether we want to open offices people system processes and you know i think the first 10 years got kind of stopped with the de-tariffing the de-tariffing was basically where the price was de-tariffed and everybody needed to now realize, okay, you're going to really price the risk. The moment the risk thing came in, you know, people started to really build up the business model. And when business models started to evolve, you know, you realize distribution, you realize technology, this all became contextual. To my mind, you know, the next few years which went by and obviously uh, when, uh, when pricing gets freed up, it invariably falls. So uh, the first reaction is always, uh, you know, how do you save yourselves in that environment? But thankfully, in, you know, I would say a year or two before COVID, 17, 18 onwards, you know, the pricing had bottomed out. You know, most of the industry participants realized that they cannot afford going down further. Some of the companies, you know, decided to list themselves. You know, with a broad-based shareholding pattern, you have a new stakeholder, you know, stepping in, you know, obviously is looking at the financial performance of insurance companies far deeper than the traditional promoter, which IDA, you know, had put as a definition in the early 2000s. So I guess the ball game became more 360 degree, if you ask me. And as I see today, you know, this COVID, if you ask me, which happened two years, frankly, while it's an event, it's a health event, it's a pandemic, but it has been an inflection point in the way everybody has started to think about risk, starting with consumers first. We have grown 20 years or maybe 18 years before COVID, looking at a product, motor insurance, health insurance, home insurance. This COVID made us realize that the customer is thinking about risk, so why don't we become customer centric? So I think, you know, there's a huge evolution. It has happened maybe in stages, but it has happened in the right way. We are today at the cusp of creating, you know, the next 20 years in a very different way than the past. So it's a very opportune time for us. We are all lucky to be here at this point, you know, to really see this and maybe carry some of the things forward. Thank you, Rakesh. Anup, last word is yours, but you have to really outshout, to outshout your neighbors and the, or whatever the friends, as you said, no? Literally, because of the logistic issues, I am told that here you can't have the walls more than 10 feet. So that's the voice coming over here. So... Just I'm glad you clarified that. Shouting, huh? I'm glad you clarified. You're referring to those neighbors and not the neighbors here. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Of course, this is an industry. You <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, I think what everyone has said is is, is true. But uh, when we talk about things like penetration, etc., I suspect that's true of every category in India. Be it automobiles, be it fertilizers, you know, or be it be it be it colas. You will find that opportunity in case you look at anything in terms of per capita consumption or in terms of penetration. So that's that's true. Also, if you speak about COVID, it's been in some sense an inflection point for everyone, not just our industry. I suspect it's been for the media as well. I mean, I don't I don't have a physical newspaper. It's been entertainment. I've watched two movies on the screen since 2020, yeah. and I remember both of them. And, um, and that too, because I think they were not released on Netflix. So I, 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 I think the opportunity really for us is, and I just want to use a couple of examples here. One is that if you look at the brand consideration scores, there's a significant difference between different brands. So, you know, some of the players have a very strong consideration and awareness. You know, you know are you aware of the brand? And in case you're aware, would you buy that? 
and that question is asked of many players but that doesn't reflect in the purchase decision of the customer so in case somebody saliency is significantly high that seems to have absolutely no bearing on the customer choosing that brand or not choosing that brand you find the difference is not as stark now what does that really tell you that tells you that we are by and large selling a commodity still and i think the opportunity really for us is in can we move away from selling say salt to selling insurance which is differentiated and i and i'm using salt as an example because i worked in the salt industry and then it was very hard to go to a go to somebody and say that you know my salt is better than your salt because it's salt right i think i think that is that is the opportunity we should be looking at and i think uh, speaking of regulation some of these enabling regulations will give us appetite to try some of those things and in that sense move the industry forward towards being a truly consumer led product so that's what i wanted to add to the conversation and the discourse yeah so you. it's a sort of soul soul searching if i may say all of you which you have done you are aware of the challenges and you say there are opportunities now we'll hear you how do you seize the opportunities what do you want to do before that some of the stuff which has happened in the in the very recent past uh, covid of course is an inflection point that all of you said but uh, from the regulatory point of view the pe investment entire thing has been liberalized uh, banks distribution which was confined to three and in three insurance products now it's gone to nine right so then the bima sugam platform which is eqic digital etc etc so there have been lot of changes but uh, now each of you can you tell us uh, uh, about the draft act which one of the interesting part is this is talking about the composite way of doing things both life and non life that's a very interesting aspect of the thing and there are many more so just presume that none of us know anything about it so what are the things which you feel if like we are giving a sort of feedback through business standard platform to the government to the dfs what is acceptable what is not acceptable and what they missed out so we'll start in the reverse way anup you you start this be frank you are using the platform sure. just say these are the thing lovely it will change it these are the things which are not acceptable probably advisable not to be done and these are the things which are missing out because we have a um, uh, insurance regulator now who who listens to all and is pretty pretty uh, i mean he was supposed to be here today but he had to fly down to toronto for some international program uh, that's why he deputed one of his uh, colleague and he gave the first speech wonderful with lot of uh, again the focus is on from india to bharat focus is on uh, entire thing how look at looking at risk management in a different way um, with lot of facts and figures but very clinical precise he knows extremely well what is he talking about and this is what uh, we have got a regulator uh, mr panda who knows uh, what he is talking about so give us your free feedback see i mean again to provide some background whatever has come out has happened in consultation with the industry so i think there's largely consensus among uh, upon up on 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 what's been what's been put out as draft uh, if you if you ask me i think just give us as two two sets of thing how how does it affect us the people who are your buyers and how does it affect the industry see i think uh, if you if you talking about the industry i think Uh, in some stage it it does i mean i think fundamentally it does provide access to distribution to people who have been left out in the past i think uh, there was a discussion that should earlier it was like one insurer one bank then three per bank now the fact that you can go up to nine it gives access to players who may not have that privilege and in case the banks want to exercise that so it, it levels the playing field to that extent uh as far as composite license are concerned you'd asked that question but i think i mean frankly i don't know how that will work because the way we think about a life company and a gia company is very different and running those two under a single entity will require i mean could happen may happen i mean a jv partner has uh, entities in europe which have a common life and non life license could happen but then you know there's obviously it's going to take time to put those things in place but i think eventually use of technology leveling the playing field would hopefully lead to a situation wherein companies will have to outshine others not just in terms of pricing but in terms of the kind of offering the customer might get and that's really my hope and my wish that that really happens and therefore the customer gets 
again to to uh, to give you another unrelated example i was speaking to the ceo of a food aggregator a, a few weeks back he told me they've seen some interesting trends that customers want customization i asked him that you know you are a food business tujhe kya customization chahiye he said increasingly a large number of customers when they order in they order from multiple restaurants not a single one so he says in a lot of cities and tier 2 cities especially people on more i mean he says over 10% of the customers order from two or more restaurants at the same time now if you look at the aggregator business where then we traditionally felt that somebody is making a choice of a restaurant or a cuisine in case you see so much variance i mean and i asked him out of interest that you know is it from the same kind of cuisine he says no you could order chinese from one and indian from another and that's what happens but i think these are couple of things which we haven't leveraged very well in terms of making something attractive to the customer and these enabling regulations will hopefully push see the the issue has been insurance in some sense has worked on access or capture of distribution and frankly your distribution share is what leads to your market share like i said salience and consideration doesn't seem to impact so hopefully some of these regulations will lead to that and in terms of giving better value proposition and choices to the customer thanks ritesh i just one point to remember is this you know all of you are emphasizing on technology but technology you don't have any monopoly on technology i'm just saying technology the digitization is true for the entire financial sector mutual funds have that advantage banks have the advantage non banking finance companies have the advantage account aggregators and whatever it is you're calling about. so it's not a it cannot be an usp for insurance companies yes you are banking on everybody talks about not only in this fora that technology will change but technology will change others also changing others also so technology cannot be an usp technology is for all same you know it's very democratic democratic world keeping that in mind tell me how what are the what are the uh, how this new uh, proposed the changes in the new act uh, insurance act uh, change the life of us your customers and change the lives of you the industry so so uh, i mean no, to to my mind uh, so so a i mean uh, the the composite license is something which is being spoken of and it's it's a very very uh, i mean you know something which is very interesting now if one was to look at it this which is are exactly the globally can you give us a sense where do, what does this work composite i mean you know, our joint venture partner operates in uh, i mean you know they are based out of germany uh, it uh, i mean in, in germany you can have a composite license they have a very large uh, operation in poland poland has uh, composite license their third largest operation is austria austria has composite licenses so i mean composite license is something which is fairly well there i think what is important i think the point here is just is yes yeah please sorry just to add sorry ritesh the even 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 my you know generally too has composite licenses but you know but then what what we what we understand from those other markets is that it's far easier to start with a composite license than to have two companies and then merge them together that is what gets complicated and that's what really takes time sure so i just wanted to add that point yeah, yeah. sure no so uh, <laughs> the, the the point which i am making is that all these markets also uh, they would have a separate entity which is doing life and a separate entity which is doing pnc so so it's it's really about how you want to organize yourself i mean i have often said that uh, i mean you know as a non life company uh, i mean you know we really run four companies we run a motor company we run a health company we run a commercial lines company and we run a crop company Uh, so 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 these are sbus which are there uh, i mean you know life uh, to that extent becomes the fifth one so uh, I, i mean you know uh, th- this is really about how do you wish to go out and organize yourself in some ways at a lot of times even distribution needs to be segregated because the kind of channels that you require for motor may be very very different from the channels that you require for health i mean you know this is something which as a non life entity we ourselves experience so i i think this is really in terms of creating an enable uh, an enablement there will be organizations which would uh, sort of want to move the composite way there would be organizations which would want to stay the uh, i mean you know as as individual entities now uh, at the end of the day i think something which the regulation is also doing is it's also talking in terms of enabling a lot of either smaller licenses to come in uh, captives to come in host of other Uh, sort of micro insurance companies to come in they want to do away with the restriction of 100 crores on the capital so i think at the end of the day i mean as i understand there are about 18 or 19 licenses which as we speak are uh, sort of with with the regulator yes so so what we are really talking in terms of pending is, pending less you are talking about the seekers license seekers L- license seekers 
so so what this means is that there would be more uh, sort of choices available to the customer to to my mind as an individual i mean you know i'm also a consumer choice is always good and 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 this this is what we will go out and see what it would also do is that it would also uh, sort of ensure that whoever is already in the industry behaves more responsibly a lot of times in a monopolistic situation you you can sometimes t tend to think that because there is no choice i can still do my uh, do things my way so so a, a th this is something which is going to be beneficial to uh, i mean no composite license does not mean that everybody would go that path uh, three uh, i mean no it will ensure uh, i mean a much better market governance sort of to my uh, to my mind yeah. incidentally i am a customer huh? okay uh, you are in safe hands <laughs> okay yeah uh rakesh so i'll add uh, to what uh, anup and ritesh is said there, is there any deadline uh, is there any deadline dfs is uh, looking for by when do we see the final shape the amendment to the act and the new rules coming in or is it open ended uh, the timeline for the giving the to yeah, give to give the action. yeah comments ha huh? yeah so comments have been given i think a lot of thinking Rakesh, is now uh, you know a lot of thinking now is emerging in terms of what people do if you ask me this is a very significant change in the way the insurance act was you know created you know when it was created there were a lot of uh, reminiscences of the earlier era the public sector times you know you still had lot of you know things controlling you know how your businesses will shift how your payouts will happen how you know distribution will happen many of these things have got lost out predominantly for two reasons one we have become a market oriented economy and two the way we drive things is digital and you know most of those paper waste brick and mortar style of laws in some way, time really come up for change so i think insurance had to happen in this way the good part is ida appropriate to its name of the developmental goal has taken this as a first thing the new chairman brought in this thing as an agenda and i think the way he is pushing on timelines clearly gives us that ability to now really construct a business model where customer is in the middle if you ask me the composite today helps me to give a customer a complete solution as against typically selling him a few products of course that giving of complete solution is an optional thing for an insurance company but if it wants to it can really do many of us in the past we have struggled like for example in covid time there was a huge demand people wanted to know whether you will cover death and many of us we were conflicted because if it's a natural death or something which happens post covid what do you do and you know while you can have an accidental death covered you know these kind of boundaries frankly speaking is not something which any consumer understands in today's environment a digital environment gives you the opportunity also to customize 130 crore people you know you really don't want an off the shelf kind of a proposition what kind of customizations you need okay you want to give a localized product in a rural area now for that if you need a certain type of an entity the insurance act has to customize to give that entity in that place to give that solution so in my view these are like more market oriented it gives an opportunity for people to now create the real business model they want to pursue you want to be a boutique guy you want to be a large guy you want to be only a surety guy you know you name it perhaps now you can do it this is where i think this insurance act intends all the regulations surrounding it hopefully will go to you know give that impetus to the insurance companies as well as to the distributors to reach the real bharat what you were saying margap uh, so you had the tough task of starting and now you had the even tougher task because you need to talk something else and repeat to, yeah absolutely and, so, and after that we'll take a few questions and go back so please uh, get your questions ready but uh, no it's not a given sell given redressal sell so don't say that uh, i say say lombard is not paying me uh, i filed the form so many days before etc etc wo sab nahi chalega just plain policy level questions or anything you want to know but nothing to do with your personal thing that you can get outside the hall when people leave you can just follow them and ask your questions that those questions yeah over to you so uh, if i can just step back and i'll add couple of other points uh, so yeah. if i can step back i think the basic and will theme. it will it lead out to a shake out in the industry at some people are saying the the new shape of that i'll come to Please. that uh, but if you if you if you step back the erstwhile act Uh, was a reminiscence of the British Raj Act, right? It's a 1934 Act, and for 70 years we've not done anything about 
truly rectifying it. And some of my colleagues have talked about the fact that we are now finally starting to modernize the way the world is looking is is uh, you know considered insurance. So the first you know key aspect that I'm that I'm seeing in this act is that it is redefining insurance and what value insurance provides to customers. Insurance is not just a risk transfer product. Traditionally, that you understand insurance is, as the, as the act defines insurance, it's a cover to pay. If you give me a premium, I pay a claim, pay for a claim. That's a kind of a risk transfer solution. What post this act and the reforms that the regulator is looking at, what will change and will address the first point that you talked about is the popularity and awareness about insurance is that if it's insurance, if you look at insurance just as a premium and claim uh, relationship, then the relationship is very weak. Because at the end of the day, out of 100 people that pay premium, maybe, you know, 7, 8 people actually have a claim, not 100%, right? That's the insurance model. So for individual customers, the probability of experience the servicing from the customer is, uh, from the insurance company is very low. S switch it to a insurance being a risk management and a risk service business, which is what globally is, you know, it is moving to, then you can engage with the customer, work on, you know, in the example of, let's say, health insurance, your wellness in your, in your health outcomes, rather than just paying for a claim when it comes to a hospitalization. If you look at the total hospital, total healthcare spends in this country, roughly 30% or 35% is in the hospitals. That is all we are taking care of. 60-65%, which is outside the hospital, pure health insurance, health care costs, plus the entire wellness, you know, fitness and all of that segment is out of scope for, you know, the industry in the way it is today. Similarly, for corporates, you can actually provide a lot more value-added services which actually mitigate risk rather than pay for a claim if the risk happens. And that's tremendously more valuable both for the customers. You asked a question about, you know, the customer. Tremendously more valuable for the customer and society at large. And that's the role insurance should play and will play going ahead. Second theme that I'm seeing is the entire approach to regulation was very rule-based. For the first time, we are moving to a principles-based regulation. And that's something that you know, all of us in the industry are very, very happy to see not only the, the, the draft act, but also the initiative that the, the, the uh, IRD is taking in shifting to a principles-based uh, you know, regulation. So what it will do is uh, streamline the entire operations. Even there is tremendous amount of micro-regulation rules, you know, very, very uh, uh, narrow definitions of everything in our, in our current uh, regime, which goes away, which, which doesn't add any value. It has over the years unnecessarily constrained the industry, which will open up. Again, what it does, some of my colleagues have talked about is the fact that customer doesn't see his or her life in the narrow lens of motor or health. In the past, we couldn't bundle a product which looked at a customer's you know, risk landscape and provide a composite product across all types of risk. We couldn't do that. It was not allowed. Today, potentially going ahead, we will be uh, allowed to do that. And lastly, I think there is a realization, and uh, Rakesh talked about it, that finally at the end of the day, you have to have people on the ground at the remotest location to provide access to insurance. Because insurance is not something that people you know, wake up in the morning and say, I, I need to buy an insurance. You have to go and educate people, make, create awareness. There is a cost a, a associated with it. You cannot, uh, you know, assume that with a minimum amount that you are willing to pay, people will do that. The approach today is now opening up the distribution. What we've seen has happened with the bank issuance side, which is a very big positive. What really should happen is even at the individual agent level. Because if you think about it, an individual re insurance agent is significantly more competent and, uh, 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 you know, and, and more aware and more knowledgeable about insurance products than a bank relationship manager. So if a bank relationship manager can sell nine products, nine insurance companies into three, because you know, nine life, nine non-life, and uh, nine health, then there's no reason why an individual insurance agent cannot sell as many. And that's what will create the real, uh, you know, scale up in terms of distribution because if you th limit an agent to one company, for him, he is not able to provide choice to, uh, you know, choice to, uh, you know, customers. And the cost of adding more distribution, uh, individual retail agent distribution, where your everyone is tied to one insurance company is significantly higher. So this is the way to leverage the existing distribution that we have. And I think we'll, you know, we'll open up the, uh, the distribution lot. So if you have, you know, one thing that you asked me about anything in the act that we sh think we should yeah. still look at is, uh, act is not very clear about opening up the retail, uh, you know, distribution model on an open architecture model, which has been done for the corporate distribution, which should be uh, considered if you want to, 
uh, achieve the scale and insurance all for all that we are talking about. That I'm sure you in your feedback you have given, right? Okay. So you're essentially you're talking about in, in terms of the multiplier effect in the distribution part. Uh, yes. Uh, any? This lady. Yeah. Just make it very short. Huh? No comment on no. the question. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so to whom you are asking? Yeah. Quickly. So I'll ask it to everyone. Yeah, quickly. Uh, just a quick question. We talk about insurance density. We talk about penetration always. But uh, when it comes to underwriting a case or and risk, uh, we typically go by the books. With, I mean, with due respect to everybody, we go by the book, saying it is what our SOP says and we'll do only by this. So are your companies taking any initiatives on this line, saying, you know, something like an unconventional uh, insurance or underwriting it in an unconventional way, the financial parameters or other parameters, you relax it and figure out whether he is a good risk to take into your books. Thanks. Eat health, beat anything. Thanks. Anybody want to answer? Maybe, yeah. my, maybe I'll, you know, add my comments and others can add to it. Look, you cannot build a sustainable business without being under, disciplined from an underwriting perspective. You cannot run a business where you're consistently losing money and hope to sustain that organization and provide service to customers. If you're not making underwriting, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, or maintaining other underwriting discipline, you will not be able to service your customers well. So that is a, the first principle of any business and also true for insurance business. Your second point, which is a very relevant point, is that are we looking at new factors? And what can we do about new product categories? And let me give you two examples. So one in an existing product category, let's say like motor insurance, one of the things that I mean, all of us have done in different, different ways, something that we've done is launch uh, products which uh, pay how you drive. So if your driving behavior is good, I will give you a price discount. This wasn't possible even one year back with the new regulator, the, you know, in the, in the reform mindset that we are seeing, that's been allowed. So we've launched a product where uh, not only can you buy one policy for both your cars, you know, two cars or your car and a bike or, you know, four cars. So that gives you a composite, you know, uh, solution for all your uh, assets, which is unique. Where you're also giving you products where you, we charge lower premium if your driving behavior is better than, you know, uh, the benchmark, for example. Second example that I want to give about new uh, categories of risk. So again, I, I speak for the industry. All of us have, or most of us have launched cyber insurance for retail customers and corporate customers. Now, this is a very risky product because it's an unknown risk even for us. All of us are learning this, uh, this exposure. But still as an industry, we've taken the lead and launched cyber insurance products because it's the need of the society at this point in time. Uh, and there are similar other examples which I'm sure my colleagues can add. Thanks. Yeah, quickly if you can. Yeah, want to give. I'll, I'll move to health since uh, motor and cyber sort of was spoken of. See, as, as an industry, I, I think the first principle that Bhargav spoke of has to be the underlying. At the end of the day, if I need to grow, I need to be in a position to attract uh, sort of for capital, and which basically means I need to sustain myself. If, if one is not able to sustain, then one will have to cut corners. Having said this, I think there's a lot which is also being done on the health side. And, and to your point, essentially the way it has to move in is you either have higher deductibles, you have uh, sublimited covers, you start with smaller covers. So, so that's something which is happening. I, I think something which will go a long way in this is that unfortunately on KYC, I mean given the fact that our products were low value products, we did not, we did, we had a very, very relaxed KYC as far as non-life was concerned. It was, it only kicked in if, I mean, you know, once the claim threshold crossed a lakh and then it was relaxed to 50,000. Now, starting Jan 1st, with, e e K with KYC getting kicked in, once we will also know our customer better. I, I think because once the, the, the element of fraud and some of this will sort of, uh, will come down or we'll be able to address that. Uh, gradually some of these products also will increase but on the health side there are a lot of products so to so to say which which have got this element thanks Yudish. Uh, you want to add no i just wanted to add you see when you don't have specific experiences you generally group things so if you Louder. if you really see what uh, india when we say 50 percent of the people are covered in the pradhan mantri you know arugya ji jeevan uh -huh. you know it's, it's basically to say, look, I can't price an individual guy in a rural area, so I might as well as give it to the entire district, entire state and all like that. This, over a period of time, culminates towards customized products to individuals. As India will move up in the pyramid, as people will start to earn more. 
so i think that is the journey which we'll have to undertake and that is also prudence where because you are clubbing risk so you are not picking up odd risk or pricing it also in a way wherein you also kill yourselves the second thing is you talked about you specifically asked about how people are financial ratings you know their credit scores and all i can tell you now products i have a product which incentivizes people also for their financial health if they have credit score civil score greater than 650 they are incentivized on premium on that so you know this is the customer centricity we are looking at this is what we expect the consumers to value they are just not looking at what do you pay in the hospital the okay. pizza topping cover approach is now there only we wanted to add right quickly just, huh so yes, just done. just one point i think huh. i mean all of them have just one point if you look at you know financial metrics you'll find that i think our underwriting standards generally for the industry are pretty relaxed and they're pretty pro customer i mean if you look at the combined ratio for the industry i think it's it's, huh. it's significantly north of 100 which so are, are, are frankly underwriting we are quite generous and relaxed about it as an industry okay one question you got four answers quickly Uh, very brief make it very brief huh? i just wanted to know the impact of uh, bima sugam on distribution companies and uh, how it affects our distribution channels okay anybody just one person can take that yeah. any other question from there we'll take one more acha we need to okay i'll uh, just get the whoever is there mike that their pitch that gentleman was raising hand for quite some time ha uh, Give, give, pitch, pitch, whatever. I don't think. No, no, no. It's over. Let, let the answer come first. Huh? Okay. Uh, so, so to my mind, I think Bima Sugam should not be looked as something which is interfering with distribution. I think what it is trying to do, to my mind, is it is trying to digitize things. It's trying to get everybody to a level playing field. Uh, it's trying to ensure that the entire journey, not only the policy issuance but also the servicing and the claims, gets digitized. Uh, so i mean you know uh, just looking at it from a distribution perspective perhaps becomes very very narrow what is also being attempted is that all channels i mean you know whether it's broking whether all channels can also sort of operate through the uh, through the bima sugam platform so i don't think it is a, it is something which is a digital channel which is competing with the traditional channels it is an enabler which is being created to bring all the companies on a level playing field Thanks. Yeah, quickly, just very brief. Uh, there are we will take, we will take. Huh? Just quickly, huh? Sir, I look after the premium financing uh, from early salary. We are already live with HDFC or go, and we are going live with. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Generally as well. Yes. What is your I question? I don't know uh, if insurers are looking at premium financing as a lever to increase penetration, or are we just looking at it as a payment option for the customers? Because we are ready to lend to customers that banks and credit cards are not ready for. But uh, is insurers looking at us as a like a leverage, like you know? To leverage our proposition for the customer. Is Jeff, you want to answer that? Very quick see, one-line see, answer. See, at the end of the day, I, I mean, no, this the, is the, mic, mic uh, the, the regulator has identified three levers. I mean, no, he, uh, 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 Mr. Panda has spoken of awareness as one lever. He's spoken mm. of accessibility as the second lever. He's uh, he's spoken of affordability as the third lever. I think what you're talking of at a, in a generic sense tries and sort of helps in on the affordability side, wherein you are trying to break a larger premium, a larger premium payment into smaller. anything which encourages that is most welcome how it has to be done the modus operandi uh, is, is really something which needs to evolve yeah. okay one more yeah that gentleman was peach we will not be able to take so many questions uh, quickly this and one more here uh, so, hello uh, uh, yes uh, sir just uh, one question basically the regulator stance has changed you know they are very helpful but do you think for a sustainable like you know a lot of things are being opened up but is the industry open to you know have that growth or have the systems and processes to handle that growth okay. so that there is no and secondly a uh, very bad experience of buying insurance online i tried it but it's very very difficult so let, let's not anyway? let's not get that specific thing i mean in, let, you don't uh, you don't uh, don't say which company etc you take it aside you got your made your point ha huh. yeah. uh, varga you want to answer uh, you know, uh, the second one i'll still address if it's been a poor experience with any one of us please let us know we'll be very happy to look at it because selling online is obviously important for all of us i don't know which company you experienced it with uh, it's something that we have to fr- fix you take it, take coming it to your right? first uh, first question the regulator opening up and creating an opportunity for us why wouldn't the industry want to do grow i mean every industry every company wants to grow and and uh, you know uh, you know become more successful so there is no reason why any company won't want to grow what could happen for some time is that there could be a lot of change and everyone will have to figure out how to deal with the change and make a sustainable business plan 
and an operating strategy in that environment. So that could create some amount of instability for some time. But in the longer term, this is all very positive. Okay. Uh, 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 one second. This gentleman, if any of the insurers sitting here is, is the insurance company from whom you wanted to buy and got into trouble, off, off, when outside this arena, you can just uh, give the feedback. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, when we say insurance for all, one of the challenge which I forced the, in the rural... No, no, what's the question, please? Huh? No, not uh, comment, because uh, we are running out short of time. My question is, uh, you uh. know, how do we plan to address the gap between the affordability and pricing? Okay. We see the insurance, and we saw a lot of policies by government, but when it comes to private life, uh, general insurance, uh, we don't see, like we see a, a more urban-oriented approach. Okay. Affordability and pricing. See, this is the classical struggle. Affordability and pricing is a matter of evolution. Like for example, I'll give you an example, missing middle. Everybody wants to cover the missing middle. Niti Ayog did a research and they said these guys can pay between four to six thousand. Now, how do you really fit in a product? Maybe with certain features. Maybe, you know, the Arogya Sanjeevani which comes in makes a start towards it. So it's going to be a journey, it's evolution. I think what we are conscious of also is the different segment of customers and their affordability or as the previous question said, no, there is a premium financing, we live in an EMI age, you know, why not we, we bring all these things and see that people get to experience and over a period of time customize. Thanks. I know there are many more questions. I'm sorry we, we couldn't take, uh, we can't take, uh, but uh, you're welcome if they have time, catch hold of them and ask them. Um, but I'm picking up from this gentleman's question is um, going beyond affordability and etc. Just taking uh, taking insurance to from India to Bharat. I mean, IRD is talking about, in, I mean, he's saying the slogan is insurance for all. It's also talking about, if I'm not mistaken, adaptation of villages by insurers, you know, the dedicated distributions, etc. It's uh, probably you guys can adopt villages or states and also it's some to some extent on the line how the banks, uh, you know, negotiate with the local, very localized issues through SLBC, state level companies like they want, IRDA want also the insurers to do it. So how do you plan to do it? Can one of you or two of you say, but is it like the banks have their BC channel and they don't, don't necessarily have to open their branches but they can they can penetrate and they have been penetrating and there is last mile connectors also the alliances with NBFCs and others when it comes to insurance and taking insurance to villages how do you make insurance for all technology as I said it's not your monopoly it's not your USP everybody has technology what else can you do Bhargav you are reaching to answer and then one more person can also Talk about so it. I think the thought process, uh, again, this is, uh, you know, work in process. There's a lot of work that is going on. Like, uh, have uh, you, are you going for adoption of any particular village or what? That. So, one of the things that the regulator has already done is asked uh, each company uh, or rather allocated each company a certain state, uh, one or two states, depending on the size of your, uh, of the, of the business. So, uh, most states would have one uh, life company, one GI company, maybe a health company. And the expectation from the insurance company is to in, increase penetration into the micro markets in those states. Now, the approach there is being finalized, debated, very similar to what you're talking about, BCs and uh, uh, the dedicated insurance distribution challenge, uh, channel or individual in every, every uh, village. That's being talked about. The product construct is being finalized to make it appropriate for the rural customer. Um, my sense is it's a matter of maybe a few months where we will see uh, the clarity on the on the scheme. But there is a lot of uh, effort that the regulator and the industry is doing together as we speak to uh, to address this gap that you're talking about. Rakesh, Ritesh, Anup, anybody wants to add? Yes, both of you, uh, quickly. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. First, so, so something very, very similar to what you said in terms of the bank is exactly what is happening here. Uh, because the concept that uh, I mean, Bhargav spoke of was, was essentially sort of saying that you, you will have a lead insurer. So, so yeah, I mean, no, a, a non-life company, that a life S company. S S SLBC concept. Yeah, well, sort of yeah. would be the lead insurer and they will basically help drive the penetration. All the other companies will follow suit. So, so that is one. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the other thing obviously which is there is that across the 269,000 panchayats, I mean, you know, this, this whole concept of what is being uh, spoken of as a Bhima Vak is something which is developing wherein every uh, sort of village panchayat must have 
I mean, you know, I must have a, somebody who's selling insurance. Again, the concept is that the lead uh, sort of insurer in a state actually goes out. So, so I mean, you know, for instance, HDFC Argo has Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. Uh, so, so then on the non-life side, we are supposed to take the lead. And in, in terms of trying to reach across and appoint all the Bhima works, there is a very, very elaborate program which is there. I mean, you know, talking in terms of the fact that for, that, that 42 and a half percent must be done by the non-life company and other 42 and a half by the life company and 15 percent by the size. So a lot of thought is going on. Uh, I mean, you know, it is work in progress. We should sort of see uh, some of this coming out over the next couple of months. On the digital side, any which way there is a channel called the CSC. Uh, I mean, the, the e-governance platform. Yes. And, and probably that's also something which would come on its own. Because as we speak, there are almost about 300,000 sort of CSCs which are there across the country. Anu, you wanted to add, uh, I, you are a financially literate audience, but till for your sins, but those who do not know, the SLBC stands for State Level Bankers Committee. So every state, one particular bank takes the leadership and all the other banks join them and that's how they get into all the MSME, SME, financing, priority sector financing, so on and so forth. For instance, uh, in West Bengal, probably, UCO probably chairing the SLBC because that's a local bank. So that's something uh, insurance regulator is thinking uh, to take insurance in rural India. Yeah, please, Anup. So just, just a couple of short points. One is that, um, see, it, you know, companies and not just insurers, they, they tend to look at urban markets currently as more attractive. Uh, I mean, and the, and the reason for that is yeah, obviously uh, got to do with the fact that the size of rural markets ends up at a granular level being small and the cost of doing business there because of the fixed cost and all is high. So a couple of things that we have done which I can share with you. We currently, for a company of our scale, we get over 5% of our business from rural markets, what is defined as rural. Um, and this is through tie-up with rural banks and uh, we have virtual sales offices in multiple cities or in villages and talukas when a person sells with a laptop and issues policies and ma'am to your point we have significantly re you know uh, uh, eased out the underwriting guidelines so that in those markets we are able to underwrite business at a certain scale and volume. So Anup you have 5% of your total my detail business. 5% so what about uh, you Vitesh? What in percentage term from rural India? Our, our percentage of the retail is more like about 17, 18 because we are a very large crop player. Uh, so, so I, I mean, uh, that itself adds. But, uh, so but at a, at a larger crop, you'd be at about 30. At, uh, including crop, crop you'd be at about 30%. 30%. Uh, right. So, 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 so at, at, at a larger level, I mean, you know, if we were to see a lo lot of uh, the rural areas or if I may say semi urban areas, mm -hmm. see incrementally a much higher growth rate than what we see in urban India. Uh, so, so this is our journey and I think each one of us… Rakesh, how much is your per rural? We'll be also about a third of our business will come from rural. 30% plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30%. Bhagav? Ours would be in the team, teens if we include uh, the CSC business and the crop business. But I think the point that uh, Ritesh is making in terms of the growth, um, one of the things that we are seeing is uh, the entire this virtual office model is probably scaling up for all of us. We have about 900 odd uh, virtual offices where we have people with laptops in these uh, micro markets. And uh, that's the way to reduce the distribution cost. Uh, you know, and I think as the business scales in these markets, the growth will pick up even faster for the industry. Thanks. We are, we are coming to the almost end. A few minutes will take. Uh, we'll start with you, um, Anup. Um, just one sentence each. Can each of you tell us something interesting you are working on which will benefit us as customer, uh, as a consumer, which you look for? Because all of you are talking about the consumer centricity and customer is the king. So, and it, because I know every product that you do, it needs to have the IRDA approval and then you you launch it. It's of course it's far easier, far more easier now than what it was a few years till few years back. But can each of you talk to us? One unique product that the consumer can expect from your stable? So, um, starting with you, yeah. So, I mean, in case you were to, and since I just have a couple of sentences, in case you were to talk about yeah. unique products, we try and do it in two forms. One is in terms of uh, creating a new category, which we try to do with, for example, with pet insurance. Others is existing products, can we make them, can we make what them more interesting, more inclusive? Pet insurance. Pet insurance. Pet insurance. Yes. Pet insurance. Yeah. So, we've done very well there, much better than we thought we would. And a lot of the business has come online directly from the customer. And that pet includes cats and dogs? And well, it's currently only dogs because like cat. other people pointed out, we didn't have as much experience. But we have used underwriting gaze <laughs> guidelines for pet based on experience of insuring cows in rural India, which I'm not sure is related, but 
but that's what we had to do so, because okay yeah we come we come that yeah okay are you <laughs> okay so after well, pet insurance what's the new thing coming up well, otherwise in our health product for example and uh, you know that we have included the we have included products for the cure community so so uh, same same sex partners live in partners can now be covered under the definition of family which is what we have done with the health product for instance the other things which are working on but it's not fair for me sure. to sure. talk about it right it now is anything interesting that uh, we should know i i think from our i'm side, giving you uh, a cyber a platform to market your products uh, so so cyber is one big category hmm. i mean no, which which for the last 8 9 years has existed on the corporate side yes, yes, yes. it is in a real infancy as far as uh-huh. retail is concerned uh, i mean and that's one and b i think such a uh, making products in a smaller sachets mm. uh, is the other one i mean those the, all the other categories are there but how do you go out and create things in a in a 30 50 rupee package so that more people can buy it okay the key product in my view of an insurance company is actually claim so you know from reliance you'll pretty soon here a certain segments of the customers will actually get claims without survey mm-hmm. now this is where your customer profiling really comes in this is where your you know that promise you know how you uphold it comes in so i think this is going to be a good can you, can you just explain it a bit so What today like each and every claim which comes to an insurance company has to come with a lot of documents you have to substantiate an accident or you know falling ill and all these things okay. now post that we still pay 99% of the claims it's not that you reject them how can you really pre profile and say there is an automated approval for those claims yeah okay bagav so uh, you know product since the use and file happened uh, one shot we launched 14 products but i don't want to talk about products uh, you know the something unique yeah so so consumer. because you know products all of us have many products lo- you know launched uh, you started this session talking about you know in- what is the role of insurance and we talked about the fact that uh, insurance should be much more engaging I think the journey that we've had, and I want to share that with you, in terms of our app, was completely focused on engagement. It's called "I'll Take Care," and the entire focus there was not sales; it was engagement. And I'll give you a small example. So, on that app, you can actually, you know, look at do a face scan, and you will give you a, your oxygen saturation level, which became very important during the, you know, pandemic. I personally used it when I I had COVID. Uh, so, just as an example. So, similarly, there's a lot of reward points, a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, Uh, free teleconsultation services a lot of uh, advisory services that you get uh, you know you can scan your food and you can get get your calorie count etc so there's a lot of work that we are doing there in terms of engaging customers beyond claims the point that we started you know uh, at the beginning uh, discussing so that app is doing really well uh, added about 3 million customers as we speak and adding 300000 a month thanks we have come to the end. anup just uh, start with cat uh, also i'm sure many of us here yeah, bo- <laughs> <laughs> who have cats at pets so uh, finally i just want one slogan each of you i i know individual uh, companies have your own slogan and all but say mutual fund the difference between you and your our friends in the other room is this they have come out something through amfi which is which sells the industry uh, mutual fund sahi hai so if you need to do something uh, bargav starting with you acha for what would be the slogan for so, that so so we, we had launched a, a, a sort of a campaign which was called fayde ki baat fayde ki baat ah uh, because see uh, the, the that's agency the, argo or classic, for no, 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 the industry company industry. this is the industry initiative when you say we have meaning what is the body does that uh, the the gi council launched Achha. a campaign which was fayde ki baat because that is i mean you know what we said was see i mean you know it's a risk product that we sell yeah, it's not an assured return or any of these बट वी सेट ये अकल की बात है ये फायदे की बात है अगर हम लोग इंश्योरेंस ले रहे हैं बिकॉज देर इज सो मच दैट गेट्स कवर्ड योर दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इफेक्टिव रिस्क सॉर्ट ऑफ मिटिकेशन टूल एनी क्रिकेटर्स डूइंग इट और बिकॉज एम फी गॉट ऑल द क्रिकेटर्स सो हु इज सेलिंग योर फायदे के बात कौन बोल रहे हैं नहीं हमारे फायदे की बात कॉमन आदमी बोल रहा था यू कैन ट्राई टू गेट मेसी पैसा मनी एंड यू नो few million dollars you can pay and get messi right now so he is a hatter of india i think that will aapka fayda hoga ise so as as anup said we as an industry lose a lot of money on underwriting we need to increase premium a lot to cover pay for messi we don't want to do that <laughs> okay so uh, uh, i got good things uh, 
Yeah, five past three. We started at uh, two or five past two. So one hour. Uh, thanks, uh, all of you. Um, I think you enjoyed. I don't need to summarize, but uh, one line is this: uh, all of them are aware how how things are changing, and I think uh, they are all loving it. They are all liking it. What the regulator is doing, and I said is it's a Hyderabad Delhi combination pushing it forward, and um, everything is for widening the market. Uh, having deeper penetration and everything for the customers right with that note we end and give them a big hand please thank you thank you for being here